to another video of Food for Knowledge. Today we will be discussing the first unit from principle of food science called as food dispersion. And if you haven't watched our previous video, please watch it. Link is in the description. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting with an introduction, let us first talk about solution and colloidal systems. A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more different substances. For example, salt and water form a solution. A colloidal system, on the other hand, is a heterogeneous system. The material that forms the base of the system is called as the dispersion medium or the continuous phase. The material that exists in the colloidal condition is called as dispersed medium or discontinuous phase. All the three states of matter, gaseous, solid and liquid may be obtained in different colloidal condition. Let us know more about colloids and colloidal system by learning about their classification. Colloidal solution. Depending upon the nature of interaction between dispersed phase and dispersion medium are classified into lyophilic colloids. The colloidal solution in which the particle of the dispersed phase have a great affinity for dispersion medium are called as lyophilic colloids. In such colloids, the dispersed phase does not participate easily and colloids are quite stable. Lyophilic colloids. The colloidal solution in which the particle of the dispersed phase have great affinity for dispersion medium are called as lyophilic colloids. In such colloids, dispersed phase does not precipitate easily and the colloids are quite stable. If the dispersion medium is separated from the dispersed phase, the colloid can be reconstituted by simply mixing with the dispersed medium. Hence, these colloids are reversible in nature. Example, colloids of gum, polymers in organic solvent, lyophobic colloids. The colloidal solution in which there is no affinity between the particle of the dispersed phase and dispersion medium are called as lyophobic colloids. These colloids are easily precipitated on addition of small amount of electrolytes by heating or by shaking and therefore are not stable. Once precipitated, it is not easy to reconstitute the colloid by simple mixing with the dispersion medium. Hence, these colloids are irreversible in, in nature. Example, colloids of metal. Colloidal system can also be classified based on the nature of dispersed phase and continuous phase. Moving, moving on to soles and gels. Soles and gels are usually reversible colloidal dispersion of protein or complex carbohydrate. Sol is a fluid whereas gel is semi-solid colloidal system. A colloidal system in which solid particles are dispersed in liquid phase termed as soles. Example gelatin mixed in water and starch suspension. Skimmed milk is also a sole because the milk protein is dispersed in water. Being colloidal soles exhibit some characteristic properties. Soles are liquids which are purable at room temperature. They have an opaque or clear appearance. Since they do not exhibit rigidity of form, they are free flowing. The dispersed particle in a soul scatter and polarize light. Colloidal particle in a soul also exhibit rapid irregular movement. Soul particles have similar charge on their surface so they do not coalesce and they repel each other. Next up we have foams. Foams make a vital contribution to the volume and texture of many common food products. They give volume and distinctive mouth feel to products such as whipped cream and ice cream. They give a light airy texture to baked goods. 
a foam contain gas bubble dispersed in liquid continuous phase the liquid phase may be a simple dispersion as in egg white which is dilute protein dispersion or it may be complex containing emulsified fat droplets ice crystal or solid matter example of complex food forms include ice cream angel food cake marshmallow Forms such as meringue and baked goods are heat sensitive which denature the protein and converts the liquid phase to a solid phase. This gives permanence to the form structure. They have following characteristics. Food forms are opaque in appearance. They contain large amount of entrapped gas as bubbles. They have large surface area between the dispersed gaseous phase and continuous liquid phase. Walls of foams are rigid and elastic and they reflect light depending on the size of gas bubble and the thickening of the wall liquid walls. Foams are categorized as light or dense. Foaming agents. The two most important characteristics of a foam are foam volume and foam stability. Foam volume depends on the ability of the foaming agent to absorb at the interface and rapidly reduce interfacial tension and on the level of energy input during whipping. Foam stability depends on the ability of the foaming agent to produce a stable interfacial film and a viscous continuous phase. Although all the surfactants are able to reduce surface tension and produce foams, not, not all are able to form stable foams. A good foaming agent has the same characteristic as an emulsifier in that is they are able to adsorb at the interface, reduce interfacial tension and form a stable interfacial film that resists rupture. As might be as expected, the best forming agent used in foods are protein. Although many proteins are able to produce forms, egg white protein are superior forming agents and are used in food forms such as meringues, angel cake and other baked goods. Other proteins used as good forming agent include gelatin and milk protein. Emulsions An emulsion is a colloidal system containing droplet of one liquid dispersed in another, the two liquid being immiscible. The droplets are termed the dispersed phase and the liquid that contains them is termed the continuous phase. In food emulsion, the two liquids are oil and water. If water is the continuous phase, the emulsion is said to be oil in water. Whereas if oil is the continuous phase, emulsion is termed as water in oil. Oil and water immersions are more common and in mayonnaise, cake batter and frozen dessert. Butter and some icing are also example of water in oil. An immersion must also contain an emulsifier which coats the immersion droplets and prevent them from coalescing or recombining with each other. To reduce the surface or interfacial tension, something must be done to decrease the attractive force between the liquid molecules so that it is easier to spread them. This can be achieved by adding surface active molecules or a surfactant. A section of the molecule is water loving or hydrophilic because it is polarized or charged and a section is water hating or hydrophobic because it is a non polarized in other words the molecules are amphiphilic example polar lipids such as lecithin which has a polar head and a non polar tail are surfactant and may be used as food additives to increase the wettability and aid in mixing of products like hot chocolate mix 
proteins are surface active because they contain both hydrophilic and hydrophobic section. Some spices such as dry mustard and paprika are also used as surface active ingredients. This finely divided powder tends to gather at the surface rather than the bulk of the liquid. So now you must be thinking how an immersion is formed. An immersion is formed when oil, water and an emulsifier are mixed together. Although there are different food immersion, they all contain these three components. To form an immersion, it is necessary to break up either the oil or the water phase into small droplets that remain dispersed throughout the other liquid. This requires energy and is usually carried out using a mixture or a homogenizer. As the oil and water are mixed, droplets are formed and emulsifier is absorbed at the surface of new droplets, decreasing the interfacial tension and allowing formation of some smaller and more droplets. There are four types of immersion which are important or potentially so in foods. First is the oil in water. Immersion. Droplets of oil are suspended in an aqueous continuous phase. These are the most versatile of immersion types. They exist in many forms like mayonnaise, cream liquors, creamer, whippable topping, ice cream mixes and etc. And their property can be controlled by varying both the surfactant using and the component present in the aqueous phase. Second type we have Water in oil immersion are typified by butter and fat based spreads in general. This depend for their stability more on properties of fat or oil and the surfactant used than in the properties of aqueous phase and because of this there are fewer parameters which can be varied to control their stability. The third of the immersion type is water in oil in water which is in effect immersion whose droplets themselves contain water droplets. These are the most difficult immersion to produce and control because the water droplets contained in the oil droplets must be stable as must the oil droplet contain in continuous aqueous phase. The fourth type of immersion is Oil in water in oil immersion which is a double immersion system in which the dispersed phase is an oil in water immersion and the continuous phase is oil or plastic fat. Because of its limited application in food product, comparatively limited work has been done on the oil in water in oil immersions. Emulsifiers Emulsifiers must be able to adsorb at the interface between two liquids such as oil and water, reduce the interfacial tension of each liquid enabling one liquid to spread more easily around the other. Form a stable coherent viscoelastic interfacial film, prevent or delay coalescence of the Immersion droplets reduce the interfacial tension, facilitates immersion formation because it reduces the amount of energy needed to break up one liquid into droplets and to spread the other drop liquid around them. Formation of film that prevents coalescence promote immersion stability char characteristics or function of an emulsifiers contain hydrophilic and hydrophobic section, amphiphilic, adsorbed at the oil or water interface, reduce the interfacial tension, forms a stable interfacial film, prevents coalescence. Natural emulsifiers. The best emulsifiers are protein which uncoil or denature and adsorb at the and interact to form a stable interfacial film. Protein tends to uncoil such that their hydrophobic section are oriented in oil and their hydrophilic sections are oriented in water. Hence a series of loop trains and tails may be envisioned at the interface. Example, the protein of egg yolk tend to be the best emulsifiers as exemplified by their used 
in mayonnaise this protein are lipoprotein and are associated with each other and with phospholipid such as lecithin in structure known as micelles the micellar structure appears to be responsible for the excellent emulsifying properties of egg yolk protein the casein of milk are also excellent emulsifying agent they are important emulsifiers in homogenized milk and in dairy desert in fresh milk the casein are associated with each other in structures known as casein micelles electron micrographs have shown that after homogenization intact micelles are present at the fat globule surface as well as individual protein molecule it is thought that micelles are responsible for the stability of homogenized milk rather than individual protein molecule synthetic emulsifier or surfactants more synthetic emulsifier would more correctly be termed surfactant because they are relatively small molecules compared with protein and they are used mainly to aid in dispersion of fat rather than to stabilize emulsion glycerol monoesterate is an example of monoglyceride that is commonly used in food acid may be esterified with monoglyceride to give another group of surfactant including sodium steroyl to lactylate which is often used in baked products synthesis also known as whipping is water freed from a cooked cold starch gel the process is a change following gelatinization and is caused by gelation as a cooked cold starch gel stands the gel ages then further association of amylose occur and the gel contracts causing both water loss and shrinkage to become apparent this is caused by retrogradation and is the separation of a liquid from a gel upon standing the process is a change of following gelatinization and caused by gelation if cooled undisturbed the gel remains strong yet reassociation may be accompanied by the unacceptable water loss to control synthesis modified starch or starches containing on the non gelling amylopectin are used in commercial product research has well established that the cooling condition will impact the strength of the gel generally if cooled too fast the amylose will not have time to form the vital micelles necessary for the 3d structure If cooled too slowly the amylos fraction will have a chance to align too much and become too close together and the liquid portion will not be trapped in micelles in both instant there will be whipping and synthesis So with this we are done with today's topic and if you enjoyed our video please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel thank you bye